Sometimes you just wish you could grab your opponent from behind and punish them full force. Sometimes you dream about landing that biblical level backshot, the one that's talked about for centuries across all world cultures. Well, my friend, you don't have to dream anymore because I'm going to show you how to do all of that in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, of course. In this video, I'm going to show you the best practical everyday combos, some extra fun ones, and I'll go over what tools you have for combo setup. There's just two things you need to remember. Ideally, you always want to hit it from the back. It's the position that gives you the most control over your strength, speed, and depth. It reduces your opponent's defensive options and makes everything harder for them. It basically turns their legs to jello. And the second thing to remember is that knowing these combos exist isn't going to make you automatically win. They're not perfect at 100% undefendable, pretty much no combo in this game is, because Sparking Zero has a bajillion defensive options and Realistically, you're never going to be landing those crazy 40 to 50 backshot combos in online matches, except for maybe like the rarest occasion when Mercury is in retrograde or something like that. So that's why for today, we're focusing on the practical stuff here. So I really don't want to see any comments about like, oh, you that action can totally be blocked. Oh my god, yeah, most things can be blocked if you do it from the front, I know. <laughs> we're just focusing on what's practical and what's enjoyable and what's fun. So. With that out of the way, let's jump into our first combo. Let's kick things off here with the classic 5-5 five, five high. Basically what you want to do is 5 rush attacks. You eventually want to send your opponent up in the air, follow through, and do 5 more rush attacks. And then you can finish off with a blast if you want to for extra damage. Or you can kind of chill, charge your key, maybe plan your next attack, see what's going on. But basically, the first set of rush attacks, it doesn't need to be 5. In fact, if your opponent is maybe countering or good at countering later on in the string, maybe you want to do 2, maybe you want to do 1 or 3. Mix it up, you know? Mix it up whenever you're playing, don't always do the exact same thing here. But the classic 5-5 combo, super easy to do and it's a quick way of just getting some damage in. Next one is the 55-45 mix-up and this one seems maybe way more complicated than the previous one, but that's just because it looks longer. The actual actions you're performing here are relatively straightforward and very similar to what you were already doing in the previous combo. So essentially what you're doing here is stringing together a 5 rush combo with another 5 rush combo, then a 4 rush combo, and then with a 5 rush combo again. Now the catch is there are actions in between obviously like the dashing and the up rush moves or the down rush moves. And you can finish this off with a blast attack. You don't have to or if you don't have enough key you can just charge key. Keep that in mind. And another thing to note about this combo, the up rush attacks and the down rush attacks, they're interchangeable. So you don't have to go up rush every time the first time you're doing it you can go down rush and then you can do up rush later or you can do down rush and down rush both so the reason why i mention this is because when you get good at practicing this combo or get good at using it in matches you want to mix it up you don't want to always hit the same attacks on it and the best way to practice a combo like this is to break it down in parts you're not going to execute it perfectly on your first try. So start with the first few actions in the combo keep practicing those until you know they're second nature once they're second nature, add in a few more actions, then add in a few more actions later. And that way you build your combo up until you get used to the whole thing. Because if you try to do the whole thing at the same time as, you know, when you're first starting out, it's just not going to work and you're going to get frustrated. All right, now let's talk about the Grab Daddy combo. This one's great because it's simple to execute, plus it has a throw, which not a lot of players expect. So throws them off their game, no pun intended. Oh God, that was horrible and it also lets you mix up your attacks. So essentially what you're doing here is you're doing two rush attacks, then you're sending the opponent up in the air, you're following them, you're hitting them one time, and then you're throwing them. Now the thing about this is that the timing on it is a little bit odd. <laughs> it takes some getting used to. So once you're up in the air, right, and the second last action, which is to do the key button hit, once you do that, you kind of have to wait for a blink of an eye or something like that until you can do your throw. So if you do the little key attack first, just the key button attack, I should say, it's not a key attack, but if you do the key button attack first and then immediately go into your throw, it's not going to work. You have to do the key button input and then you have to wait a beat and then you can do your throw. Another interesting thing to note there is that you can hold guard right after you do the key input so you can have that ready to go and the key input can actually be done during your teleport. If you do it too early it won't register but you don't need to wait until your character reappears. Moving on now let's talk about the grab daddy razzle dazzle flare combo and the reason why I'm calling this a flare combo is because I mean it's fun and it looks cool but we are giving our opponent more opportunities to defend so this is one of those combos that's just like hey you want to have fun with the game go for it or you think your opponent's going to fall for it but 
don't expect this one to be maybe as foolproof as some of the other ones. Not that any combo is actually foolproof, but you know what I mean. And this one is just so fun because it's so Dragon Ball-y. You're basically doing the same inputs as before, but adding a couple more. So once you do your throw, you hit the key button that attacks the opponent and makes you teleport. You do it again. And then after that, you finish it with perception. So you slam them down into the ground. Honestly, it's just a lot of fun. And that's why there is the Grab Daddy Razzle Dazzle Blast Flare combo variant, which is the same exact thing as what we did in the previous combo. But instead of perception at the end, you do a blast. Not every combo or action you take in this game has to be about min maxing everything, right? You're allowed to have fun. Now let's take a look at a few easy combos before we get into the flex combo. So here we have the Easy Peasy 555. Reason why it's called that is because you're just stringing three sets of five rush inputs with a few inputs in between. This is one of the simplest combos you can do, and it does pretty solid damage. It does way better damage than if you just did the auto combo where you just keep hammering on the rush key. And it's also more defensively sound than that auto combo. And next we have the Furious 7 combo, which is basically you hitting Rush 7 times. So you want to do the thing where you end up behind the opponent and you send them flying up in the air. And then you immediately want to hit them with a blast. Very Dragon Ball, does a lot of damage for, you know, no action basically. Of course, are you going to be able to land those 7 hits every single time against somebody that knows what they're doing? Probably not, but it's just another tool in your arsenal to mix things up. Now let's move on to the flex combo and honestly I know you can do way more damage with the setup we're doing here but we want to keep things practical remember there's no point in you know memorizing all these 50 hit combos when online connectivity is not really gonna let you do it anyway. So the flex combo it's maybe a lot of work relative to how much damage it does but it does teach you a bit more advanced skills about the game which is always handy to have. You start with the seven rushes and then here is where the tricky part comes in. When you send your opponent flying, you want to start charging your key right away. And then you want to turn that into a dragon rush and immediately turn it into a Z-burst dash. Because as soon as you do that, you are going to end up on the other side of the opponent and then you can continue comboing them. The challenge here is getting that timing right because if you do it too early, you'll whiff on the opponent. If you do it too late, you know you won't end up in that combo sequence. I've been trying to find consistent cues to tell me for when I should go into my Dragon Rush and my Z-Burst Dash, but what I've been finding is relying on audio doesn't always work because sometimes when you're powering up, the audio doesn't trigger the exact same way and that can throw you off. So you can use the audio of your guy grunting or yelling or whatever as a general guidance, but just keep in mind that it's not always going to trigger in the same way. It doesn't hurt to have it as a point of reference, but just keep in mind that it can change on you. So anyway, once you fly up to the opponent, you can start comboing and you can really start going to town here. So we're keeping things relatively simple in the grand scheme of things. We're basically doing actions that we've been doing in all of our other combos so that it kind of automatically translates into something more complex here. And this is a combo that you can finish off with a blast attack just to do some more extra damage. Now again, I know that the flex can be turned into a much bigger combo, but we're just being practical here. And I really want to get you in that mindset of focus on what you know is going to get you damage and what you know is going to work. Don't try to go for something impossible because you'll just end up frustrated you won't have any fun you'll feel like the game is against you uh, especially when you're playing online and connectivity can be so hit and miss now before we start talking about your combo setup options i just want to drop a quick utility combo here super simple you just hit rush and then up and key send your opponent flying in the air and you don't have to follow this up you can just use this as a kind of breather or just as a who i need to charge my key just for a little bit you know, your opponents aren't really going to be expecting you to hit a two button combo. It's, you know, technically a combo, but it's barely a combo. So it's just something you can slide in there once in a while to mix things up and to give yourself just like a second or two of being able to charge your key. And sometimes that key can really make the difference in a match. All right, now let's talk about setting up the combos. And ideally, you always want to be behind the opponent because that reduces their defensive options. A lot of defensive options in this game only work face on, head on, what's the word, head on? Yeah, that's the term I'm looking for. So if you're hitting somebody from the back, if you're clapping their cheeks, they can't do as much. So one thing you can do is side vanish during a combo. So let's say you hit rush three times. If you do a side vanish, 
Then you can do two more and it will count as your five rush hits as long as you continue that combo. And the way that you do this is pretty simple. So all you're doing is hitting a direction on the left stick and hitting your guard key in the middle of your combo and you'll appear on the other side. And you don't want to hold forward when you do this and teleport behind directly because if you do that and the opponent's guarding, I think they're automatically going to be turning around on you. So you don't want that. You want to be vanishing to the side. Just keep in mind that this is going to use up some key. Another great combo setup option that you have is maybe less obvious, but think about when your opponent is charging their key or just generally at long distance, not doing much, that kind of thing. You can use a zebra's dash to get behind them almost instantly, and then you can go to pound town on them. You can just start hammering them. You can start, you know, pushing them down into the floor, into the toilet bowl, whatever, whatever you guys are into. But keep in mind that sometimes your opponent might be baiting the zebra's dash. So don't overuse it. Don't try to, you know, always go into a combo with a zebra's dash. It's just another tool in your arsenal. I think I've said that a bunch of times in this video. It's just one of the ways you can mix up your attack, but you can definitely catch opponents kind of out of pocket, I guess. If they're charging their key and they're not really paying attention, you can just, you know, roll up behind them and start going to pound town. Now, of course, we got to talk about the rolling hammer as well, which is a super useful mechanic, but not everybody has this move, unfortunately. So the rolling hammer is just a series of hits that if they land, they will turn the opponent around. So for example, for end of Z Goku, I think it's three rush attacks and then one key attack and then turns around the opponent. And this is great because after you do that, you can start going to pound town with your combos. So rolling hammer and then combos. And that's how you can turn people around and start, you know, doing your doing your dark business. Now, rolling hammers can be blocked. You know, they're not perfect or anything like that. But like I keep saying, it's just another tool in your arsenal and you're Final tool, I guess, for setting up combos is something that people maybe overlook sometimes. And it's just like the quick movement options that you have. So you know how when you get close to your opponent, your controls or your movement options change. So if you hit side uh, left or right on the analog stick and you hit the dash button, you'll do a bunch of different acrobatics. And you can do that just to, you know, change your positioning up on the opponent. You never want to just attack head on in a straight line because you know, that'll be very obvious. It'll get blocked. It'll get teleported. So you can always do acrobatics around your opponent. It doesn't cost anything. Just, you know, be strategic about it. If you keep spamming the same moves over and over again, even, you know, the worst opponent in the world will eventually pick up on it. And there you have it, my friend. You now have all the tools you need in order to start landing some biblical back shots. And the thing about combos is they feel so maybe unintuitive or wrong or really tough. But once you do enough reps in training mode, it will click and you will find yourself just like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I can do like 10 different combos that I previously thought were impossible. All it takes is a bit of practice. And I know, you know, nobody wants to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to pop in my Dragon Ball Sparking Zero so I can play training mode for an hour. Uh, but you know, what's one hour in the grand scheme of you playing like 100 hours because you have all these sick combos and are having a lot of fun, right? Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please consider subscribing or hitting like or notification bell or whatever other hype YouTube options there are. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.